Good morning. She needs no timepiece to wake her up hours before the sunlight announces a new day. The morning routine is clear and unchanging. She goes through the motions like a soldier goes through a drill. This habit has long superseded the knowledge. Three logs in the stove steadily bring the tea to boiling. Porridge with sugar and salt waits further away from the center of the stove. Jane was packing the sandwiches and the tea when Yusuf came back from the stable. He put his white hand on her neck and squeezed the tense muscles that awkwardly lift her left shoulder. It shouldn't be as hot as yesterday, he said. Maybe we won't run out of water for the mule this time. They went through the village, passing houses with similar stories. In each house, there is a whole story, complex and rich. Lifetimes spent in this place. Each and every one of them walking the same trodden paths. They pass the black and white cow who walks completely alone. She's been going to the pasture and back so many times that she doesn't need to be walked anymore. In the distance they see a cart, grandmother, mother and father and two kids. They gonna finish early with the hay this year, said Jane. Yup, I guess they will, replies Yusuf and added with a slight sigh. They have it easier, the kids help a lot. After it was clear to both of them that this short exchange came to an end, Jane added, They sure have it good, the young'uns. They will have land when they grow up. Yusuf nodded silently, as if to himself. And so they went to the outskirts of the village, where people work their pieces of land. Good afternoon. Patricia was gathering branches that the wind tore off the trees last night and scattered across the field, when Mark came to her with the wheelbarrow to take them from her. Look, he said, Stefan finally goes to take Jane's and Yusuf's field after them. How long has it been since Jane died? She asked and added immediately, not waiting for an answer. It'll take time to clean up all the weeds and prepare the soil. He's all alone. Mark finished putting all the gathered wood to the wheelbarrow. He stared at old Stefan for a while, his cheeks relaxed, sweat shining on his forehead. Then he tightened his lips and after two heartbeats took off to get rid of the wood. She looked at his red, shiny back as he plowed the soil. Oh, how she wished she could take off her sweaty clothes and enjoy the wind that from time to time would bring the unexpected yet very much appreciated relief. Well, at least she didn't have to break the ground, but only to throw seeds and cover them with a spade. The tools are crude, but they do the job. It's the hands. The hands are the problem most of the time. Mark got used to a type of a swinging motion that doesn't tire the shoulders that much. And while he's in the same position, he doesn't even think about his back anymore. But the hands always need to be strong. And it hurts. It hurts the wrinkled, thickened hands. Good evening. The youngest daughter starts crying. This is the only way she can express her desires, needs or feelings of discomfort. Here comes the mother. Finally, the confusing discomfort will end. Mother gives the boy a bucket full of grain, the color of the sun. The boy looks at his sister, but she cannot separate herself from what is outside. Right now, discomfort is all she is, all she sees. She feels movement, pressure on her back. Mother, mother lifts her up. Mother brings her close to her breast. A reflex takes care of the rest. At first greedily, almost brutally, sucking nourishment. Then calmly. Then everything is safe, warm. Everything is fuzzy. Rest. 
even if for a little while. Everything goes dark, silent, in preparation for another long day. Good night.